Hi, this is Philip Anthony Albertelli, and welcome to The Week in Doubt, episode 65. Today's episode is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at www.audibletrial.com slash The Week in Doubt. Over 100,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. All right, no shout outs, so let's dig right in. I wanted to cover a kind of funny little story that's been going around in the news. E.W. Jackson, the Republican candidate for the position of Virginia's lieutenant governor, apparently thinks that yoga is satanic. Jackson, who you could probably call an extreme social conservative, wrote a book in which he denounces what he perceives as the evils of homosexuality and miscellaneous other things, including yoga. Here's an excerpt from the book that's found its way into the press. When one hears the word meditation, it conjures an image of Maharashi Yoga talking about finding a mantra and striving for a nirvana. The purpose of such meditation is to empty oneself. Satan is happy to invade the empty vacuum of your soul and possess it. That is why people serve Satan without ever knowing it or deciding to, but no one can be a child of God without making a decision to surrender to him. Beware of the systems of spirituality which tell you to empty yourself. You'll end up filled with something you probably do not want. And uh, I believe this excerpt made its way onto the net via National Review reporter Betsy Woodruff. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I gave some credit. Uh, But to me, it's just so ridiculous and insulting. It reminds me of the way I was brought up. I don't know if you listened to the recent episode I did entitled Weird Stories from My Past, but I discussed the kind of superstitious mentality that I was brought up with as a young Catholic. There was this idea that you constantly had to be wary, that any spiritual practice that wasn't specifically Christian was a potential gateway for diabolical forces. I don't know if you've ever met any yoga or meditation practitioners, um, but satanic isn't the first adjective I'd use to describe them. And it's a kind of egocentric view um, that Eastern physical, mental, and spiritual practices that far predate Christianity, by the way, are evil because they originate from a religion other than your own. When E.W. Jackson describes the goal of meditation as being to empty oneself, there's definitely some truth in that, but that doesn't mean you're opening yourself up to some kind of demonic infestation. One of the key differences between Western and Eastern religion, and it's a difference I've long been fascinated by, is that in Eastern religion there's a focus on the negation of the self that you don't find as much in Western religion, with the exception of some concepts found in certain forms of Christian and Jewish mysticism that promote union with the Godhead or the dissolution of the ego into the absolute. If you think about it, in conventional Christian thinking, there's a personal God that is a God with an ego self, a God who is anthropomorphic in mind, if not in body, a loving God, a jealous God, a God quick to anger, etc., And furthermore, there's the idea that our individual selves live on for eternity, either in everlasting paradise or in eternal perdition. But in Eastern spirituality, specifically in Buddhism, and in its various forms, including Zen Buddhism, the idea isn't to perpetuate the self, but rather, in a sense, to extinguish it. Buddhism, which predates Christianity, the historical Buddha was said to have been born in the the 6th century BCE, arose out of Hinduism similarly to the way Christianity arose out of its mother religion, Judaism. The Buddha, or Siddhartha Gautama, his birth name, was obsessed with ending suffering and breaking the endless cycle of birth and death, known as samsara. The Buddha postulated that suffering of a sort, at least, arose from desire. So thusly, to end suffering, you must end desire. And the way to do that was through the dissolution or negation of the ego. No self, no suffering. This might sound scary or disturbing to Western ears, but to me it just really means in a modern or practical sense at least, just living in the present moment, shifting the focus from the ego and all that neurotic inner chatter to the present and to a sense of oneness. Being a non-believer, I'm not going to say that oneness is some kind of divine essence, but I will say that there is a sense of oneness that we've probably all experienced at one time or another, and that can be achieved through meditation, trance, or more illicit chemical means, or just by going out and losing yourself in the beauty of nature. 
but that doesn't mean you're entering a state that leaves you vulnerable to demonic attack, especially since I don't believe that demons exist or any other supernatural entities exist. As you can probably tell, I still have a reverence for Eastern religion, but I was really into it for a while in my late teens into my earlier mid-twenties, falling on the heels of my really losing my faith in the Christianity I was brought up in. Coming to the conclusion that religions are man-made, that there probably is no God, and that seeing as consciousness appears to be an emergent property of the brain, that there was probably no afterlife either, I was left temporarily in a really dark place. But I found a sense of comfort in Eastern religion. I didn't believe in pretas or bodhisattvas any more than I believed in angels or devils. But there was something comforting in the mere idea of a spirituality that didn't focus on a creator god or an everlasting self. It meant to me at the time that you could still be a non-believer and still have some sense of spirituality. And that brings up the concept of atheism and the transcendent. But I've already done a show on that and probably will again in the future. I was going to wrap things up, but there was one other comment I wanted to make. In between editing the show, I was catching up on the most recent episode of Real Time with Bill Maher, and at some point, Bill was talking with the panel about this uh, news story you might have heard. I think it's been out for a couple of weeks now, but there was an all-male panel on Fox News. Uh, it might have been led by Lou Dobbs, and... It was apparently so misogynistic or chauvinistic that the guys were catching flack even from female Fox uh, hosts. Both Megyn Kelly and Greta Van Susteren denounced some of the comments that had been made. I think the the gist of the, the talk in question had been something like whether or not working mothers were good for society and whether or not um, males were the more dominant sex, but they were speaking like the males were the more do dominant sex when you uh, look in nature or biology, supposedly. And so one of Bill's guests brought up an example of a lion pride, how, you know, in lion society, that sounds funny, lion society, like they're walking around on two legs and driving cars, but in lion society, it's the female who does the hunting, um, and then there's also lots of other examples. Uh, one of my favorite animals, the bonobo, which is a kind of subspecies of chimpanzee, which is known as kind of being the kinder and gentler cousin of the chimp. Um, and bonobos have matriarchal societies. Then if you look at if you look at the insect world, and there's all sorts of weird gender bending things in nature, like male seahorses. I wouldn't say if they're, they're technically pregnant, but I believe after conception, they're the ones who carry the eggs around in their uh, bellies or pouches. So it sounds to me like the fox guys were just trying to hijack biology to reinforce their own chauvinistic or misogynistic uh, viewpoints. But I just wanted to chime in with that. Uh, okay, now with that, I'll wrap things up. So once again, this has been The Week in Doubt, so... Thanks for listening. Um, as always, you can like or subscribe through iTunes or Podbean. You can like the Weekend Out Facebook page. You can go to the Weekend Out YouTube channel and check out some of the video uploads. And uh, all right, thank you once again.